Welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. Appreciate all you guys that are watching and listening. We have over a couple thousand people now that are watching the podcast, and we really appreciate that. Today I want to talk to you just a little bit about being in the minor leagues. I played in Decatur, Illinois the second year that I played, and we were called the Decatur Commodores. We weren't called the Decatur Giants, we were called the Decatur Commodores. And during the middle of the season, they had the draft in June, and we had a young man that was drafted uh, from Southern Illinois University. His name was Mike Wilbins, and he had a $30,000 signing bonus coming to him. And he asked our general manager if he would uh, to put it in his bank account there in, uh, in that city. And the general manager said that he would. Now our manager, his name was Poochie Hartsfield. And during the winter months, he was actually an SEC referee. He refereed basketball games. And he told me that he had refereed quite a few Kentucky games. So we talked quite a bit about K. Wood Ledford and, and Adolph Ruff and different things about uh, basketball at that time. But Poochie was a great guy. But back to Mike Wilbins and his bonus. His bonus uh, was supposed to have already been there. And he went back and asked his general manager, my general manager also, uh, where it was at. And he said, well, it hadn't got here yet. And then they waited another week and went back to him again. He said, well, no, I still haven't seen it. So finally he talked to Poochie Hartsfield, our manager. He said, let's me and you go talk to, the, to our general manager and find out. Let's go to the bank and see what's going on. So the general manager said, okay, I'll meet you guys in the parking lot at the baseball field and we'll go to the bank and see what happened. And so the general manager got in one car and Mike Wilbins and Poochie, uh, Poochie got into another car and they were following him to the bank. When Poochie came back and was telling the story in the clubhouse, the general manager started running red lights. Next thing you know, he was turning down alleys. Poochie said, I kept trying to keep up with him, but I just couldn't do it. He finally lost us. But long story short, the general manager had put that $30,000 into his own bank account. And as the season went on, instead of us taking buses to where we were going, we had to take vans. Things got a little bit bad from then on in. But what I'm wanting to talk to you about is lying. We do not want to lie. If you can remember in the 70s and 80s, a man by the name of Hal Lindsey, he wrote a book called The Late Great Planet Earth. He sold millions of copies. He was trying to tell everybody when the world was going to end. And it finally came that time, the date that he had given, and the world didn't end. He wrote a couple more books, but they didn't quite sell as good as the first one because people had marked him that he had lied to them. But can we believe a lie today? If you all have your Bibles, please turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 13 because there, there's a great story there. And there's a lot of application that we can put to it in our lives. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but if you have your Bible, when this podcast is over, go to 1 Kings chapter 13 and read that whole chapter. Starting in verse 1, it says, Behold, there came a man of God from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord, while Jeroboam was standing at the altar to burn incense. Now, Jeroboam was the king of Israel. And he was burning incense at the altar. That was something that he was not supposed to be doing. Verse 2, he said, He cried out against the altar of the word of, by the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus say the Lord, Behold, a son shall be born of the house of David, Josiah by name, and he shall sacrifice the priest on the high places who burn incense on you, and human bones shall be burnt on you. Now, he prophesied about another king coming in by the name of Josiah. And Josiah was going to be a, a young boy when he becomes king. But he was lit, like, literally going to bring him back 
to the Word of God and to the truth and be able to do the right things that God wanted him to do. Verse 3, Then he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, an altar shall be split apart, and the ashes which are on it shall be poured out. Now when the king heard this, he got mad. And he wanted people to reach out and, and seize this man of God because of the things that he was saying. But when he reached out, his hand withered up. And after it withered up, he asked this man to, to go to God and pray for him and ask him for his hand to come back. And the man of God said, okay. But after that, Jeroboam asked the man to come and eat at his house. He wanted to praise him and give him gifts. Then in verse 7, Then said to the king, <clears throat> said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. But now listen to what verse 8, 9, and 10 say. But the man of God said to the king, If you were to give me half of your house, I would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of God, saying, you shall eat the bread, you shall not eat no bread, nor drink water, nor return by the way which you came. Now, do you all understand? God specifically told him not to eat bread, not to drink water, and not to go back the same way that he came. Those are specific instructions. And the man of God was following it. He told the king, No, I'm not coming to your house. I'm not eating, I'm not drinking, and I'm not going back home the way that I came. But now there was an older prophet and he was, he was a religious man. And his sons had heard about what this other prophet had done. And they went and told their father. And their father asked his sons where these men were at, where this man was at. And so they went and found him. Now listen to me in verse 16, 17, and 18, especially verse 18. And he said, I... Uh, Verse 15, then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. This is the older prophet talking to the younger one. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go with you, nor will I eat bread, nor drink water with you in this place. For a command came to me by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water here, and do not return by going the same way which you came. Now listen to this verse. This is the whole key. He said to him, I am also a prophet. He's telling him that he's a religious man, like you. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord. Oh my. Y'all hear that? Saying, bring him back with you to your house that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. Ouch. Are there religious people out there that lie to us today? Yes, there are. Unfortunately, there are. But how do we decipher and make sure that we're following the truth? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. How do we prove all things? It's by opening the Bible and read it. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study or be diligent in study. And that's how we do it. In 1 John chapter 4, and verse 1, it says, test all the spirits because there's many false prophets that's gone out into the world. There's going to be a lot of false people saying things that are not true. And here, I, listen to this. I do not want you to trust me. I want you to prove by the Bible, book, chapter, and verse, what I'm saying to you. Because how important is your soul to you? Is it worth $30,000 like Mike Wilbins' bonus? But now, this man believes the older prophet. And he goes home and he eats with him and he drinks. But now when he leaves, what happens? A lion meets him on the road. And the lion kills him. He was riding a donkey. And there was people passing by on the road. And this donkey and this lion were standing beside of this man that was dead. The lion wasn't eating him. The donkey wasn't afraid of the lion. But it was a sign of God that we don't want to disobey the Word of God. God had given him specific instructions. 
He gives us specific instructions today also on how to be saved, on how we're supposed to worship upon the organization of the church. And those are the things that we're supposed to follow to God's specific instructions. Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. It said that Ananias came into the apostles. He had sold a piece of land and he only gave them part of the money which he had sold it for and told them that that was all that the land uh, brought. But he kept some of it back for himself. And his wife had full knowledge of this. And Peter told him, he said, you're not lying to me, but you're lying to the Holy Spirit. You're lying to God. And he said, you're, you're going to die today. And he did. He literally did. And then his wife came in a few hours later and Peter asked her, is that the sum of money that this land sold for? And she lied to him and said, yes. And the men that had buried her husband had just gotten back and said, you're going to be buried beside of your husband. And it cost her her life. Here, here's the great thing. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, God cannot lie. So we know every time that we're reading the Bible, God is telling us the truth. And if we can have book, chapter, and verse and back up what we're doing, we're in the best situation that we can possibly be in. But in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26, it says, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his own soul? We can lose our souls by believing a lie. There's a lot of religious people out there today that will tell you a lie. Some, and I, I'm not saying this in a bad way. I'm trying to say this as a warning to all of us. We have the Bible. Let's look at the Bible. And let's understand how important that our soul is and always try to search for the truth and not to have another religious person like me or anybody else tell you something that is not true and it costs you your life and it costs you your soul. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.